It's me, John Park, and this is John Park's workshop. Uh, we've done it. We've made it to Thursday. So that is something right there, uh, isn't it? Uh, thank you, everyone who's, uh, who's joining up to, uh, to watch the show today. I see uh, we've got some people over in the Discord. If you are interested in chatting with a bunch of good Adafruit uh, people, community, then uh, head on over to Adafruit's Discord. You can find it at adafruit.it slash discord. Uh, and I'm just seeing the YouTube come online, so hello to uh, people who are waiting to join in there and uh, see what's what today. Uh, let's see. What's happening over in the Discord? Let's have a look. You know what? In fact, let me pop up the Discord chat right there. Uh, <laughs> I can see Lars has joined us. Hello, Lars. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what's Lars doing on Discord? Hey, in fact, there he is right there. Well, he wasn't there before. How did he get there? What's going on? Uh, all right. So I think, let me, uh, let me check my levels here, too. I've got my microphone right there, so when I turn and yell in it. It's going to get a little loud. Hey, Charles Burnerford from southeastern Pennsylvania. Connor McCarter, Dan Caliano, Eric Osterley. Hello over in, uh, over in the YouTube. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I think our levels are probably pretty good. Uh, peaking at minus 12 dB. You know what? Let's push, let's push it. Let's see if that, uh, if that helps. I don't want to clip. It always seems like it's just teetering on the edge of clipping. Oh, in fact, let me goose this mic Level right here a little bit. All right, we'll see. If it's, if it's terribly quiet, let me know, and I'll push it up a little bit more. Uh, all right, so what do we have going on today? Let's see. Let's um, start off with a... Uh, oh, I'll give a little mention. Last uh, weekend was the Virtual Maker Fair, called Virtually Maker Fair, and uh, I believe the videos should all be available up uh, in archives on the uh, Adafruit... YouTube channel if they were Adafruit uh, talks. There were, I, I think, uh, four talks by Adafruit people. And I think many others are available over on the Make uh, channel. So head on over to YouTube and check out the Make channel. And you should be able to uh, go back and see some of the excellent uh, and interesting talks and presentations and projects uh, and panel discussions that were done. Uh, Let's see. Next up, I'll mention our jobs board. We've got a jobs board up over at jobs.adafruit.com. Uh, and if you, hey, that's the wrong, I'm showing you behind the scenes stuff there. That's the, the wrong place. Uh, let's see if I can switch that to a different, stand by while I switch that to a different uh, Firefox browser. Yeah, that's good. And where's the other one? Here it is. Jobs. There's the jobs board. Uh, and that reminded me, I'll check. Yeah, I didn't know if the Facebook was live. It looks like it's going live. Uh, so the jobs board is totally free. So you can go there, you can sign up, uh, and you can post a position if your company's looking to hire or uh, get a freelancer or contract uh, job done. And if you are looking for work, you can post your resume and skills there uh, so that you can... Um, 
either look for help with a project or, or a job or a full-time position, or uh, maybe you're looking for work. So that's a way to uh, go check that out. Um, things have taken a turn for the creepy over on Discord. Hmm. I've got to watch my back. Uh, is that really necessary? <laughs> so scared. Uh, but that project, by the way, came out. Uh, so my guide for uh, making your own MP3 playback device using uh, a Feather M4 along with a prop maker wing is live. In fact, I usually don't show these projects after the fact in the Learn system, but what the heck, let's, let's uh, take a look today. If we head on over to uh, the Learn system, and I'll pop this up in a second. Let me just find the find the project. Duh, duh, duh. There we go. All right, so let's uh, bring back that Firefox browser. And if you look here on the learn guide, I usually just type in a name of an author if I know it. So I typed in my name and it showed all the projects that I've worked on and I think it sorts that alph alphabetically. Uh, so there's the, there's the MP3 playback uh, project. We've got a little uh, intro video there of the Lars in action. And then here's a uh, parts list. These are optional, uh, these are choices. You could either use the M4 Express Feather or the NRF52840 Express uh, Feather for this project. I used the M4 and I didn't test it with the prop maker feather wing, so I'm not certain about that compatibility. Sometimes there's, uh, there can be uh, a need to double check pins, uh, pinouts between a feather wing and a board, but I think this one works. I think it should. Uh, I've got a little speaker here, which is what I plugged into the uh, prop maker feather wing, a little battery that fits between the uh, boards, tactile on off switch for turning the enable pin on and off, the little uh, panel mount USB extension, so we could get a USB port for uh, battery charging and data if you want to code it later or put different sound samples on. Uh, I opted to go with some fancy looking header pins because it's what I had laying around and I like them. Uh, you could use any, any uh, feather headers. I think you want to make sure they're full height. The little mini short stack ones are too short for that battery to fit between the boards. Uh, I used some black nylon standoffs, M2.5 standoffs and screws, and then a plush doll of your choice, uh, but we highly recommend Lars. Uh, so putting the player together, I've got a little section here that goes over, in fact, let me zoom this up for you. Can I get any bigger? It's always a crapshoot in browsers if uh, zoom up actually zooms images. It felt, I feel like it used to more reliably than it does today. Uh, so here's the parts laid out for that build. Uh, soldering in the header pins, soldering in the enable switch. One thing you'll notice uh, here in this image, I can zoom in closer, uh, is that I'm feeding the cables through this hole, which I'm using as a strain relief, and then uh, soldering the ends into the ground and the enable. And that's a, a nice way to keep from having to worry about those getting tugged out in... Uh, in practice. Hook up the battery, some uh, standoff uh, hardware. You can see even with the full size, um, go to the original one here, even with the full size um, female header pins here that I have, my um, standoffs are a little tall for that. So there's a, there's a bit of a gap, but those, are, those have a nice enough connection. Those are deep enough that you don't have to worry about it. Uh, and then plugging in the speaker is uh, sort of second last step of the build. I'm going to go over the uh, installing your CircuitPython libraries, installing CircuitPython, which are sort of uh, boilerplate pages that we go to in these guides. Uh, then this one talks about the specific um, libraries that you'll need, and this shows an image of, we started doing this a few months ago, whenever we have a CircuitPython project like this, we'll take a screenshot of the board contents that allows you to compare what you've put uh, on your board to what we had running when we wrote the tutorial uh, so that it shows particularly libraries with, with CircuitPython projects to make sure you have all you need. But in this case, there's also some media files, so it shows you those MP3 files for Lars. Uh, 
Then we uh, have the code, and this we went over last week in our uh, project, or was it the week before, I forget now. Uh, and then the sample files are downloadable as a zip here, those MP3s. I did get permission from uh, Joe and uh, Matt to use the permission, uh, to use the sound files from their, their video. Uh, so you shouldn't get sued for that. And uh, that is it. Then we go into, uh, once that's set up, and you can test it by tapping on the, uh, the board and have it play your MP3s. Then we uh, go into the surgery of installing the um, board into the plush doll there. So the board, board sits sort of at the center. I've pushed the speaker up towards the mouth area. I have the uh, clicky switch down by one palm, and then I have the uh, USB port running out of the foot. And then there are just some detail photos of that action, but all of it was, uh, I was able to push up through the foot there, wrap it in a bag so that the solder, uh, ends of the soldered pins wouldn't catch on the batting inside. And there it is, uh, it's ready to be charged up and tested out, and then another uh, demo video there. So that is uh, a little recap of that project. Then uh, let's see, what can we move on to next? I'll mention that on uh, Tuesdays I have a uh, show. This is uh, six episodes in now that I'm doing on the Microsoft Mixer page. And we also broadcast it to the usual uh, Adafruit channels. Uh, and this is uh, about a 45 minute to an hour long show where I build a project from scratch or go over in detail uh, a build of something using Make Code. This past uh, week I went over using the Cricut robotics platform with Microbit and I built a little demo board uh, that allows me to show off a uh, solenoid, a servo motor, an electromagnet, a DC motor, uh, reading in inputs from a potentiometer as a knob for motor control speed, uh, as well as a button to fire the solenoid off. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in how that works, go ahead and uh, check out the archive of the Make Code Live. Uh, and if you uh, want, come, come tune in next Tuesday and see what, uh, what I've got next. I don't know yet. I'll be figuring that out in the next couple days. Uh, let's see. We also have a show and tell coming up. That's uh, today at 2.30 Pacific time, 5.30 Eastern time, and I'll be doing a half hour show and tell where you can come on with your projects and show off some things you're working on, some things you've finished, some things you're thinking about uh, getting involved with. If you're looking for uh, advice or you want to give a tip or a trick, show off a favorite tool, please come on uh, onto the show and tell. Uh, we would love to see you there. And there will be a link to sign up and jump into the StreamYard uh, uh, app that we use or web-based uh, app that we use for that uh, going up in the Discord right before the show. Uh, so you can head to the Adafruit Discord and there's also a blog post uh, that I think will be going up. I think it just went up, so go check out that blog post. Uh, all right, how about uh, we talk about a product of the week? So product of the week this week is this newly announced Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigs of RAM on it. Uh, so I think that is um, just hitting the stores, I think today or yesterday. And uh, that's, that's a huge upgrade in RAM. The uh, previous largest one was half of that size uh, using four gig gigabytes of RAM. And I believe there's also been an announcement about a 64-bit operating system coming, a Raspbian that'll run on this. I don't know if that's out or in beta. Uh, but I think that will help you take advantage of some of that RAM. Uh, and you may also find it advantageous if you're doing things like setting up virtual machines on there to have some RAM partitioned out uh, or doing things with servers. But I'm interested to see what kinds of applications start to evolve to take advantage of that much RAM. Uh, and that is uh, available now over in the Adafruit store. Uh, we have them in stock. Here's our... Um, product page for that. It goes for $75. Uh, and then we also have these others in stock, the one gig for 30, two gig for 35, and the four gig for 55. Uh, and along with those, you'll want to get a good power supply. When uh, I see people having any problems with the Pi 4, uh, biggest issue is power supply. You want to get a good three amp 
uh, five volt or 5.2 volt power supply so that you're not dipping down and, and, and browning out. It is, uh, it's a beefy processor on there and it's using quite, quite a bit of power to, to run it. Uh, all right, so that's my product pick of the week. And that's the Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigs of RAM. Uh, and let's see, what does that bring us to? How about, let me see if I had any other goodies in the, in the browser there. No, not right now. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do is uh, a little bit of a gear report. I've got a new fun piece of uh, vintage gear that I am threatening to do something with. I'm not quite, uh, quite sure what. Um, and there it is. It is a slide projector that I picked up from an online auction. Uh, and this was because my friend uh, Todd and Carlin uh, and Barb over at the Crash Space, they were doing a live stream a couple weeks ago talking about um, uh, Carlin had, had gotten some slide projectors to make some interesting uh, patterns appear on the wall. And I was looking at some of the gorgeous industrial design of these 1960s era, uh, 50s and 60s era slide projectors. And I found this one. I got it uh, very inexpensively. I got it for $2 plus shipping. And uh, I couldn't resist. So I thought I'd, I'd uh, show you this beauty and uh, maybe start thinking about some possible projects. So first of all, how big is it? Well, you can't really tell right now with that scale until you see me put my hands on it. It's actually quite compact. And if I zoom out a little bit here, you'll be able to see it better. Someone wrote in a very nicely color matched uh, maroon uh, marker or crayon on here, the letter R, I'm not sure why. I'm gonna try to take that off with some rubbing alcohol. Uh, but it is a hammer finish paint. It's all uh, a, a die cast metal uh, construction of some kind, I think, uh, maybe aluminum. And it is made in Japan. The brand on it is Solidjor or Soligor. And I've seen uh, another very, very similar one or the same one labeled with someone else's um, logo. So I'm not sure who made it originally. And uh, it's got a little release here on the top, which allows this to uh, hinge open. And this is pretty clever. This gives you access to the slide uh, carrier and it also focuses the lens. So you can see it's this two-in-one mechanism. Uh, you need to have it open about that much in order to uh, put slides in, but anything from here out, let me move this so you can see the lens, is uh, going to focus that lens, which is really clever. Um, there's the bulb. It's uh, got some kind of a uh, coating on the top to prevent you from getting blinded. Uh, and then here's the little slide carrier. I'm gonna get, I don't, I don't think I have any slides, so I may ask my parents to send some. Uh, this slide carrier allows you to place a slide in that's on deck and then uh, show it and change it out. So you can kind of do this one, two, one, two. Uh, this hooks right into here, like so. And uh, there you can see how that'll put, move the slide in front of the lens. And uh, I've got it uh, hooked up to power. The bulb is good, so we'll, we'll see it power up there. Uh, I could probably blind this camera a little bit. And, uh, and then we can focus it like this. So that'll be more impressive when we actually have something in there. Um, and uh, give me some suggestions if you have any for, for uh, slide-based projects. I'm sure you could do something interesting with uh, a partially disassembled uh, LCD so that maybe you could um, uh, create uh, digital patterns that you're broadcasting or, or uh, throwing through the, through the projector. Or maybe nothing at all. Maybe you'll just use it as a, as a projector. I don't know what the life on the bulb is. You can't generally leave these on for hours at a time and expect them to survive. And I haven't looked yet to see what the replacement bulb for it is and what that would cost. Um, but uh, that is my, uh, my gear report. Gorgeous little box. I'm sure it will find some kind of use here uh, at Park Manor or in my workshop. So that's my gear report. Much more uh, attractive than the usual sort of plastic carousel thing that I remember from, from uh, when I was a kid from the 70s and 80s, those gross beige plastic ones. Uh, and uh, let's see. 
what is next? I think this, uh, let's, let's have a look. I want to check out and see if there's any uh, ideas in the uh, Discord or YouTube. Uh, Adam Bryant says, I've got some Solajor, Solagor kit. How do we say that? Probably used by pirates to show plunder how-to videos. That would explain the R. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Kentrell. Uh, Baum Inventions says, if you want great looking cases, look out for bronze stuff from the 60s to the 80s. Yeah, beautiful. I love bronze uh, industrial design. Uh, Dieter Rams, right? I think that a lot of the bronze stuff came from Dieter Rams. And uh, Connor McCarter says, the width is just right for a Raspberry Pi. Mm -mm, that is interesting. Let me just put a tiny screen in it, make it a very awkward little, uh, maybe fit an OLED back there and try to focus it. It'll be upside down, I'm guessing. Uh, we can flip that. Let's see, over in uh, Discord, uh, Osterly, Eric Osterly says, maybe remind people, that, yes, the Adafruit store is open again for everyone. That's right, I should have probably said that when I showed my, uh, my product pick of the week. You can go and order things from the Adafruit store. Go and do it. Uh, we're, we're open for business sort of as normal, as usual. We're shipping. Uh, and we encourage you. It's, uh, it's kind of our main way of staying alive and in business and, and uh, making payroll for all the wonderful people who work for Adafruit. Uh, so uh, if you are looking for some stuff, we've got some stuff. Maybe go buy some stuff. Uh, let's see, what else? So, uh, running folding at home, that's an idea not for my retro projector, but for a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, with 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, excellent. And uh, <laughs> Jim Hendrickson says this, this uh, vintage case actually has a 3D printed object feel to it. Yeah, it does have, it does have a style that, that's uh, modernistic, simplistic, uh, streamlined enough to do a 3D print from, for sure. Uh, yeah, powder coat on it, I guess, yeah, that is a, it does seem like a hammer finish, um, powder coat. I didn't, I don't know if that sort of hammer finish crinkle can be done with powder coating or if it's, if it's a different, uh, method. Uh, camera case, uh, yeah, that would be a cool case for a camera. In fact, I wonder, uh, if the Raspberry Pi, the new Raspberry Pi 4, um, or the new Raspberry Pi high, high quality camera, high res camera, I forget what it's called, would work with it. Uh, this is the case that that uh, projector came in. I don't know if it was the original. It does fit very nicely. Uh, just a sort of falling apart. The, the zipper has got some, some issues. I might try to repair that, but a handsome little case that that came in. Uh, all right, so let's now uh, take a look at our Make Code Minute, shall we? All right, let's get this set up. Let's let that plane fly by too, how about? Uh, and let me find my Chrome browser here. So there we are. For the Make Code Minute today, I wanted to show a couple of new features in the beta version of Make Code that I love, that make your life so much easier when working in your block code. And uh, this is currently in the micro bit make code and the arcade make code that I've checked, and I'm not sure about others. Uh, first of all, to get there, you're gonna need to type in beta after the address. So this is makecode.microbit.org and then slash beta. And from there, anything you click on will stay uh, inside of the um, beta world, the beta release. And you can go up and check, I believe here under uh, version or about, you can find out which version that you're running. Um, so, one second. There we go. Uh, so, the features that I'm really excited about inside of Make Code Beta are all about making life easier working inside of the editor. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and minimize the simulator here for a second. And what you'll see is we have kind of a new look here, which is a code block with three little dots inside it to indicate that there's something hidden in there, as well as this down arrow. 
Uh, and so if I click on this down arrow, it's going to expand out these blocks. Whoops, I got excited with the, with the uh, zooming. Let me move this over here. Uh, and so that helps me when I want to go in and work on, edit the code inside of here. But when it's set and I don't want to deal with it and I've got a lot of clutter because my code is getting to be large, what we can do is simply right click anywhere on that outer block and choose collapse block. And that will hide the contents away, but it runs absolutely the same as usual. So it's, it's just a visual uh, sanity type of feature. Now, uh, another feature I really like is you'll notice sometimes your code as you're working can get sort of spread out around the canvas. And up until now, I usually zoom way out, find things, try to move them in closer. Um, at the risk of yanking blocks out of other blocks. So this feature I really love is called Format Code. If I right click in the canvas anywhere and type format or click on Format Code, it simply reorganizes everything in the state it was in uh, to fill a small area right in front of you. So I can use that to get everything in front of me. I can also use it to clean up if I expand a bunch of blocks, they're gonna overlap. If you'll notice when I uh, start opening blocks, they're on top of each other. So right click, format code, and we get a little bit of space there. We can also combine these two tricks. So if I want to expand everything, I can right click in the canvas and choose expand blocks. That will expand everything. And I can right click and choose format code and that will uh, neaten everything up. If I now want to go back to a compact view, I can right click, collapse blocks, it'll collapse all the blocks, and then I can again right click and format code, and it puts everything neatly in a little cluster, and I absolutely love this. So uh, that is a little tip that you can use in the beta to make life easier working inside of the blocks, and that is your Make Code Minute. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, here's a good word for it, Connor McCarter said. Decluttering feature. It is absolutely a decluttering feature. It is the, the decluttering feature we maybe have, uh, have been missing this whole time. So it's really uh, lovely to see that, that come into the code. Um, all right, so next up, I've got my Make Code Arcade Game Pick of the Week. And uh, this is from the uh, Arcade Forum in the forum.makecode.com in the arcade channel. And this is called Catch the Apple version one by Sir Bull, uh, who says, I made a small game inspired by the good old Game & Watch games. You remember those little LCD screen Game & Watch games from Nintendo? You move the crab, catch the apples. It's as easy as that. Uh, and so let's take a look at it. Let me hide my banner there. Uh, and let's look at the the game itself. So I'm going to expand the simulator here. And again, a little uh, note that the frame rate in your view on this broadcast is not uh, anywhere near as smooth as it is running right, right here in front of me in the browser. So, uh, all right, so I'm going to hit A and now I get to catch apples with a little crab. And I don't know if that's a crab apple pun, but if it is, I love it. Uh, and you'll notice there's some very delightful little graphic, whoops, as the apple splats into the bucket. Ah, uh, it gets very fast. I'm gonna miss one. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna get there in time. Ah, I better stay in the middle. Uh, so that is the Crab Apple game. And I'll, and I'll go back to the uh, opening screen here for a second, actually. Let me restart the game. I absolutely love this, um, whoops, restart. Oh, it's not letting me restart. Hold on. I'm not sure why, but we'll let it uh, run out. Okay, so let me go full screen here. Uh, look at this gorgeous intro graphic with this crab, really beautifully done. <laughs> He's got his little pot there to catch his apples. Uh, absolutely adorable. Uh, and what I'd uh, recommend is go ahead and have a look at, um, oh, I know I had the debugger turned on, that's why. Go ahead and have a look at not only some of these beautiful uh, sprites, really, uh, evocative, appealing looking sprites with simple animation. Uh, there's some nice uh, secondary animation splashes uh, inside of the, the pots there when the apples are caught. Here is that uh, graphic for the intro, which I'm gonna guess was done in a third party um, pixel art software and imported in, but maybe not. Maybe someone uh, uh, was, was 
painstakingly pixel by pixeling their way through right in this interface, which is super impressive. Um, and have a look at some of these uh, features that, that, that are used in here. I, I found it very useful. It's a pretty big program, so I found it very useful to use the collapse blocks format code. And now I can see uh, it looks a lot simpler like this. And uh, find out, okay, there are three forever loops that are running. Uh, and these take care of things like the uh, character position, the Apple position, and the state of the game, uh, as well as some of the graphic changes that happen. So that is my uh, Make Code Arcade game pick of the week. It is called Catch the Apple. You can go check it out inside of the Make Code forum. Give the author some feedback. It's by Sir Bull, and it is fantastic. So that is my arcade game pick of the week. All right. Uh, so let's see. We are now up to... Uh, this part of the show where I'd like to talk about a new project. So last uh, couple weeks, I've been doing stuff with my MP3 playback and our, our friend Lars back there. Um, one of the exciting things about the CircuitPython audio library and the MP3 playback is something called the mixer. And one of the features of the mixer, if you think of a mixer, sometimes uh, you'll think of a audio engineering uh, board that has a whole bunch of channels with sliders on them to adjust the volume levels of different inputs and outputs. Uh, so the mixer in this case, it allows us essentially to uh, mix two different sounds at the same time. So we can have a sound like a song playing in the background on one channel, and then we can mix in and play a sound effect. And so uh, I didn't use that on the Lars project because I was just playing single one-shot samples, but I was talking to Lamore the other day and she said, what would you think about trying to use the CircuitPython MP3 audio mixer stuff that we have uh, and use that along with a Feather M4 to revisit the uh, Lucio Blaster from Overwatch project that I made back in 2017. So it was going back like three or so years. Um, what's changed in the hardware? What's changed in the software? So let's, uh, let's head over to the workbench and I'll show you uh, what we're starting with and where I think we're heading. So uh, this is, it's a little bright in here so you won't be able to see the lighting too well, but this is my Lucio Blaster, I have it uh, mounted on a couple of vices here, pan of vices. Um, and I'm gonna move my gorgeous projector out of the way. There. Okay, so this is the Lucio Blaster. Uh, and it's a uh, prop gun from the game Overwatch. Uh, the way the character in the game works, he can uh, heal his teammates using audio power-ups. He can uh, send sh sonic waves. It's a sonic amplifier, I think is the name of the actual blaster, uh, to hit enemies and force them back. Uh, and he has a few things like reloading and uh, running a, a really big shockwave that's called an ultimate, all from this blaster. And so uh, I built this uh, by 3D printing a ton of parts, and I had the Ruiz Brothers print these end pieces for me because they're bigger than any printer that I had at the time would print or still have. Um, and I have it stuffed to the gills with a uh, Metro, uh, gosh, 32U4, I believe is the board in there, like, a, like an Arduino uh, Due. I think that's the chip that's in that. Uh, I have, I'll show you in a second, a ton of extra parts to be able to do MP3 playback. That's, a, that's an MP3 music maker shield on there. A uh, separate board, the audio effects board, to do the gun sound effects. So the MP3s are just playing the songs, and then the gun sound effects are a completely different piece of hardware. Um, and then you can see there's a ton of NeoPixel LEDs on it, speakers. Uh, I'll give you a demo here. And... I'll hold it up to my microphone so you can hear it well. So this is playing background music. Uh, if I hold my hand over uh, one of these, you'll see the glow of the, of the lights and these are blinking here, view meter style. When I pull the trigger, 
we get uh, a light up there. Let me try to switch cameras here. Is it gonna let me switch? Yeah. Let's see if I can make this dark enough to, to see. Okay, so that light uh, glows brighter when we shoot, all of them do. Um, I have one trigger pull for one sound effect. I have a tilt sensor, it just went off for a ultimate. I have another one for a reload, and then I have a second trigger hidden in here that I can push, and that's more of a, uh, a secondary fire grenade launcher type of sound effect there. Uh, so that's what we're starting from. And uh, what I wanna do for a second is show you the kind of bonkers amount of hardware that's inside of this thing. And I think the easiest way to, to show that actually is with the fritzing diagram for what I built. Um, so here you'll see, okay, so I've got this Metro. Uh, oh, I guess it's, yeah, I guess it's the Metro. I believe that's a 32U4 in there, right? Or maybe it's a 328, I can't remember now. Um, might be a 328. The Music Maker MP3 playback shield that sits on top of this and has an SD card. Uh, and that was to play the songs. Uh, oh, and by the way, that, that uh, blaster has a switch on it that allows me to switch uh, out a different um, song. So, so you can flip between two different modes or songs that he does and the, all the lighting changes to green in the other song. Um, you'll see there's a mess of wires here going out to all of our uh, different speakers and uh, NeoPixels. Oh, I don't have the second ring actually. That, there's just one ring on there, thankfully. Um, and yeah, actually this is an earlier fritzing. So there's a couple things. I don't have a microphone on it at all, but I do have, uh, this amplifier that's, that's amplifying just the front speaker. I think I have another amplifier that amplifies the little side speakers. Here's the effects, um, trigger that's being used for the two tilt switches and the two trigger modes. Uh, and then there's a lot of batteries involved, uh, and, and power boosts. Uh, so, so. This is an earlier optimistic version. Actually, it got even nuttier in, in, in reality. Um, so uh, the first thing I did when, when Lamore mentioned this was I started twitching because this was a very involved project. So the thought of revisiting it was a little daunting. Um, but then I thought about it and I realized one of the things that's really changed now is the amount of stuff that we can do all inside of a single board running CircuitPython. Uh, will allow me to get rid of about five different pieces of hardware and, and a ton of complexity uh, that was in that one. So um, if, we, if we take a look over here, let's go back to the bench cam. Uh, I've got a proof of concept here where I'm able to use just this lovely little feather M4, and it's native MP3 decoding, means that I don't have to use the MP3 wing. Uh, this prop maker feather wing allows me to drive NeoPixels, uh, has a level shifter built on, and it plugs and plays, which is nice. I have an audio amplifier on here so that I can plug in um, my speaker, and uh, the accelerometer that's built right onto here means that I might be able to do things like the reload and the power up again without extra hardware and without extra wiring. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let me power this up and show you one of the most exciting things being the dual uh, audio capabilities. So I'm gonna just hold my, let's see, I think I've got a volume, a little volume uh, pot on here. I can turn this up a little bit. I might draw too much current with, with it loud, so I'm gonna get my, my microphone close up. So you can hear it's playing this, get my head out of there. It's playing this song, and then I'm gonna tap, and you can see it's now uh, layering on top that second sample. So I'm using tap detection on the prop maker wing. Uh, you'll also notice I'm playing some pretty, um, sophisticated animations that are uh, lockstep with the beat. 
and that's using the new LED animation library that Katni and Roy just released for CircuitPython. Uh, and so I never actually had anything super sophisticated going on with the LED lighting in my original blaster. Um, and partly that was just because the code complexity was getting to be pretty high. I was actually running out of RAM uh, for my code. So at some point I had to stop adding features. But uh, with the M4, we got plenty of speed. We got plenty of memory. And this LED library, I just started using it yesterday for the first time. And I'm really happy with it. Um, and so what I'd like to do is actually take this, uh, let me unplug this and we'll take this over to uh, my workstation and I'll show you how simple some of the code is involved with doing uh, what, is, what amounts to some pretty sophisticated things. Um, and so this is, this is making me happy about the prospects of, of revisiting this prop. Uh, so let me plug in these goodies here, and let me give you a, how about a down shooter view of the world. Uh, I'll also just check in with my Discord people, because I love to make sure that they're not telling me my audio went crazy. Uh, oh, that's funny, Wolf220 says, I have a feeling JP will make a Nerf gun one day. I just saw that there's actually, a, there were some Overwatch, that's the, the game that this uh, blaster is from. There were some Overwatch Nerf guns at one point. They're, they're kind of dinky little, they're not full scale prop kind of ones, but. Uh, okay, audio is good, thank you, Mr. Certainly. So let's, uh, let's see if I can bring up a Moo. And I'm gonna open the code that's running on this board right here. So let me bring up my Moo. I'll go to load. And there's my code.py. I'm gonna zoom in quite a bit. Uh, okay, so you can see here, I'm importing some libraries at the beginning. I've got some of the usual suspects, time, board, bus IO, digital IO, audio IO, here's the audio mixer I'm bringing in, which is what's gonna let us do the, the two channels of audio at the same time, or two voices of audio, I should say. Um, these are mono, uh, I believe you could do stereo, and I might, I, I'm considering doing stereo uh, so that my music channel is coming out of all of the small speakers and my uh, triggered sound effects are coming out of just the front, and I can do that just by using a left and a right channel, um, sort of fake pan. Uh, then you'll see I'm importing a bunch of these LED animation library um, presets, and uh, I'm experimenting and playing around with them, so I've, I've imported a whole bunch of them. I've got Solid, Blink, Comet, and Chase. You're seeing Blink right now. Uh, this is Comet. Or rather, that's Chase, and this is Comet. You can't see those that well because my thing is in the way. But, um, and I'm also bringing in this thing, uh, animation sequencing. I'm not using group yet, but animation sequencing. And this is pretty cool. I'll show you what this is about in a second. Um, so next up, we're bringing in accelerometer stuff. Uh, I've got my speaker set up and my audio mixer set up. And then I'm setting up a pixel pin on the board as well as I've got the enable going on the prop maker. Uh, let me... Yeah, we can leave that. That's not too loud, right? Uh, well, let me show you. One of the cool things is that we can set the volume for the two voices separately. So what I'm going to do is go and set the voice level to zero on voice zero, uh, which is the music, and I'll hit save. And now when it restarts, the, uh, the CircuitPython uh, restarts automatically with... Whoops, I just triggered the, uh, the gunshot and scared the heck out of myself. Uh, the... Uh, Music is on voice zero, and so that's not going to play now, the background music. Uh, so here is, let's see, it's running off the screen a little bit, but I'll show you what these are. Uh, this pixels set up. Uh, to get the music playing, uh, or the, the lights rather, playing in time with the music, what I've done is I figured out the beats per minute of the song. And actually, both songs are, are 28, 128, which uh, makes life easy. Um, the You can do that just by tapping along with a with a application that'll read tap tempo if you're really good. Uh, I was off by two. I thought it was 130 and it was actually 128. Um, you can also read the waveforms inside of uh, audio software and, and figure it out. But I just guessed at the 130 and then tuned it by eye uh, until the, the 
LEDs were doing things to the beats. So I said BPM uh, did some math here that divides uh, 60 seconds by beats per minute. Uh, that's what gives me what I'm calling a beat. Uh, and then a bar is four of those because I wanted some stuff to happen every, every four quarter notes or four beats essentially. Uh, these are some of these new animation calls. So Blink, this is how you call Blink with the new LED animation library. You simply call Blink as uh, pixels, which is my name of my strip um, here, NeoPixel strip. The speed, and I'm saying the speed of my blink is the beat, so that's going to be, I think, 0.04 seconds or something like that. Uh, and then a color, and these are some presets. You could use hex values in here or RGB values, but I'm using a, a preset that came with a library of Jade, which I thought looked nice. Uh, and then similar sort of thing, you can look at the details in Katni's excellent guide on, on how Chase and Comet and some of these others work. Uh, and then this is really cool. This is this animation sequencing. Uh, let me see if I can make this a little wider. Can you see all that? Close. Let me just hit return here and you'll see it all. Uh, so animations is being defined as an animation sequence, and then you just type in the name of different animations that you've already set up, uh, and it just runs through those at a uh, advanced timing. So it'll play through it for X number of seconds, and then move on to the next one. And so I've set every two bars, so we get eight beats, uh, and then it moves on to the next one. And boy, this is so nice to work with. Like, at least for, for me and the way I think about stuff, this is a really approachable way to, uh, to deal with complex and... Uh, appealing looking animations uh, and even ones that are hitting the beat with the music in this case. Uh, now here we're getting into this mixer stuff. So I've set up a, uh, I can zoom in a little bit more even. I've set some variable called background music and that's the one song I'm using right now. It's an MP3 in the Lucio folder on the CircuitPython drive of my Feather M4. It's called BGM, background music heal MP3. And then I have another one called speed. Uh, and eventually I'll have the switch on the gun switch between those two, but right now I'm just testing. Uh, and I'm calling this sample zero, uh, the audio MP3 decoder opening up that file. And then I'm doing the same sort of thing for the effects. Right now I'm just using the shoot effects and I'm calling that sample one and setting up a uh, audio MP3 decode of that. Then we are telling the speaker to play the mixer and the mixer has these voices. It has voice zero. Uh, which is playing sample zero, and it's looping it. I've set the level. That's how I was able to turn it down a second ago. And I'm also setting the level for voice one. Even though I haven't called voice one yet, uh, it's not playing. It hasn't been told to play yet because I haven't done voice bracket one play. That's what happens when we trigger it. So inside of my while loop, I'm playing my animations, so they just run. And this is uh, pretty much the code from Lars. If the accelerometer is tapped, then I am playing an effects sample. In this case, it's the Lucio uh, shoot.mp3. Uh, and the mixer voice is told to play that. So this is a, a little redundant right here, right now, but this will be changing depending on which trigger or accelerometer thing happens. It can pick, it'll end up picking between those four things uh, or more, but that's what I have right now. Uh, and so that does, uh, does it. So what I can do right now just to, to demo something different is I'll play uh, a different background music song. And let's, let's boost this a bit too. It might clip, but we'll see. Uh, we'll boost that up. We don't want to get this above one or we'll uh, be more likely to get some clipping artifacts. Uh, and we'll play a different sound effect. So uh, how about the reload sound is what we'll play when we tap. So I'll save that. Oh, and let's change the background music uh, to the other song. So let's do... All right, so there's a different song. And now you can see when I tap, I get this uh, reload sound. Whoop, okay, so <laughs> I just drew more current than my USB uh, plug here at once. So, so this works much better, better, better with a battery or a boost. Uh, so I'm gonna turn down those levels a little bit and see if we can prevent drawing too much current. How about four and two? There you go. I really love this Comet 
animation. Really easy to set up and very smooth. Um, so let's turn our volume back off on the that first one. And so you can see also we've got these really nice uh, digital controls for volume. So uh, we could do other uh, inputs like certain button combos or have a potentiometer that we're reading on the feather to be able to do stuff like a volume change. Uh, and it happens digitally, which is nice. You could even mix them separately. Um, Summersoft says in the chat, it shouldn't clip much. It caps anything above max values. Okay. And, and partly too, it could be my audio that I'm putting into it. May, I have to look at the levels of what I'm, what I'm bringing in there so that they're not um, clipping just on their own and we're just hearing it uh, when it's loud. So good. All right. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Summersoft. He says, hopefully we can get the reset click taken care of too. Uh, excellent. Yeah, I, I kind of dodged that a little bit in the Lars project by turning the enable pin on and off right before I played a sound. But since I'm always playing the background music, uh, I, can't, I can't turn that on and off. Um, and oh, and C. Grover says, attached a big capacitor to the prop wing to help with transient power needs. That's a good idea, yeah. So I'm gonna to start to get into the nitty gritty of, uh, of getting this to work uh, as, as nicely as possible. And so, so things like that will be important tips, putting a capacitor to help with, uh, with the, the current draw, not browning out, not resetting, uh, maybe uh, using some RC circuits to avoid any kind of clicks, but uh, sounds like that may also be taken care of in software. So uh, that wraps up what I've got. We went a little long today, I know, but uh, this is a big, deep, involved project. I'm very excited about uh, how far this, this uh, uh, software really has allowed us to pull hardware out of the equation as well as the, the kinds of speeds we now have with things like the M4 chip. Uh, it's really amazing. So uh, I'm excited, and I'll keep you posted as I, as I move this forward. I'll definitely write up a guide on how to build this. Uh, I don't know if it'll... If I'll gut this gun and put it in or build some, some other or put it into a different prop, I'm a little reluctant to, to gut that one because it's very tightly packed in there. Uh, all right, well, that wraps it up. Um, I will, uh, let's hide that there. I will uh, remind you that we're gonna have a show and tell uh, coming up at uh, just in about 40 minutes, 37 minutes. Uh, so uh, check out the blog and over in the Discord, there'll be a link if you wanna come on, please do. Uh, I don't know if anyone signed up, so someone better show up and show something. Uh, it's a show and tell. Show, tell, please. Uh, all right, thank you so much for stopping by. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park. This has been John Park's workshop, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.